I have built a Streamlit app that lets us talk to our data using natural language. Our data set can be small or large, you know, 500 records, or it could be 5 million plus records. We're going to do this using Pandas AI and a large language model to do this. Before I go any further in, into this video, if you find this video, this app useful, helpful, and or interesting, please consider liking this video further. Please, sub, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. All right, so let's just get going. I'm going to show you the file that I'm going to upload it. So it's not the biggest file, but I want to make my point. I mean, it's 245,955 records, 20 columns, so decent enough, right? Um, and it's not like a very small file. It's big enough. Let's uh, upload this file. It says US Airlines flight routes and fares. It's going to take a few seconds. So while it's doing that, let me show you at a very high level what's how this works. So Pandas AI, you know, takes your data set. In this case, the file that I just loaded, it takes it will extract the metadata from it. And it, it will then later take the user's question plus the metadata in and make a prompt out of prompt out of it and feed it to a large language model to get a Python code. So the prompt is going to be very directly asking for a Python code using the question and the metadata. So the large language model will provide the Python code. Pandas AI will take that, run that code to provide the answer to the user's question. So here we go. This is almost 16 million tokens, this file, 36 megabyte file. It's uh, roughly 16 million tokens. I could have easily gone to ChatGPT and loaded this, uploaded this file and interacted with it using natural language. However, however, I wanted to show you here that it would have cost me $7.85 just to upload the file, right, before I even asked my first question. This is 36 mega, megabyte file, you know, 600, 700 megabyte files. I mean, you're looking at $100 just to get that file in there. That's one of, you know, many reasons I can think of why I would not use a portal like that, um, whether it's ChatGPT or anything else okay so the next thing i'm doing here is like just showing you giving you a preview to the data the first five um rows um the the thing that pandas ai lets you do and i it's really useful and, and i recommend that you do it is provide column descriptors so you, we can provide the column descriptors although as intuitive as it may be um why one might want to do that here's an example I mean, I do this all the time. I will name columns that make sense to me, but it wouldn't make sense to most other people. Like here's LF underscore MS, right? So, yeah, there are reasons why it's good to do that. And I've found just using this app quite a bit is that it will make a difference providing the column descriptor versus not providing in terms of the response you get. Okay, it's going to be more on point by providing column descriptors. I'll hit return here. Uh, let it do it, do it. Things behind the scene, uh, behind the behind the scenes here. As I always do, I will leave a link to everything that I've been showing you here. That I'll show you in the rest of the video. A link to those items in the description below, including the Python code that created this app. And you know, you can take that code and use it as is, or you know, nuance it for your use case. And, and at the end of the video, I'll show you a couple of tidbits about my code that are going to be useful for you to know about. All right. Once it gets to this point, it's going to give you the option between choosing between Google Gemini or Ch uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. We'll stick with 3.5 Turbo. Um, you know, when I say interact using natural language, uh, using natural language, let's just do that. So as a user, as an analyst, uh, I might want to say, hey, plot the average fares for flights leaving out of Let's say Pittsburgh, yeah, by by year. All right. While it's doing that, I'll, I do want to show you this one quick thing here. Pandas AI. I'll uh, leave a link to this documentation from Pandas AI. Um, does a decent enough of a job uh, with their documentation. Provides a bunch of examples of how to use Pandas AI. You know how to work with uh, different kinds of files using Pandas AI. What uh, large language models uh, you can use, 
in connectors. So definitely recommend that you read a little bit about the connectors, you know, that you can connect with different data sources. Uh, SQL, these are the SQL connectors that it currently lets you, uh, that lets you connect with, uh, things like MySQL connector, and even things like uh, Google BigQuery, etc. Okay, let's get back to the app here. Here is the plot, okay. And then what I've done here is my code, and uh, you can leave this in the code if you plan to use it, or you can take it out. It, it shows you the code that Pandas AI got in return uh, from the large language model. So this is the code it took um, and ran it to plot this thing, uh, plot this guy, okay. And also I've set it up on the bottom where it can, it gives you the cost to actually do this. Basically, the you know, uh, uh, the input and the output from large language model. Uh, what what it would cost you. So I'm going to actually upload a different file because it's large enough of a file. It takes a little bit longer. I want to show you some, some of the art of the possible when I talk about using natural language. So I'm going to load a much smaller file. It has 500 records. And I'm not even going to show, I'm not going to even provide column descriptors. They're pretty straightforward enough. This file, as well as the last file, yeah, they're, they're pub openly available on, online, so publicly available. So with this file, I was just showcasing the art of the possible as an analyst, as a data, data scientist, like what are the kind of things you can do? So if I'm doing exploratory data analysis, one of the things that most likely I'd want to do is to you know, look at some correlations uh, between different features. So let's say plot the correlation matrix for the, the following features. And let's provide them here, a loan status. What else? Uh, principal principal terms, I know there's age, I know there's gender, and um, I think it has education. All right, let's just do that. So just about anything that, you know, you can think of, like, in terms of getting insights, right, like getting uh, plots or getting averages, or, you know, and I'll show you one or two other examples, like just from, from the art of the possible. Uh, here's a correlation matrix. And here's the code that it got from the large language model um, that, it, that it executed to get this co uh, correlation matrix. Okay, let's try another thing. So, you know, sometimes it's just like you're, you know, let's say this was actually a data set that it was part, it was your CRM data set, right? Part of your CRM and the salesperson wanted to say and find some sort of instances right now. In this case, I'm going to say, um, find uh, all instances, uh, I want to be as specific as possible, <laughs> where age is specifically 40 years old and principal uh, is greater than 900, okay? And then again, be as specific as pro possible with Pandas AI, I found that it's more, sp more specific. You are, you're likely to get what you're looking for. Provide this in a table format. Okay, so, you know, there's so many use cases for an app like this. You know, if you had this, you can give it to salespeople who can then, without bugging sales analysts or someone else, they can just go, f you know, fish around for things that are looking for out of this data set. Say, hey, give me all instances of somebody, you know, who's in, who's in this geography, et cetera, that they want to might prospect, you know, et cetera. Or if you're, you can give this to your marketing manager so they can stop bugging the marketing analyst and just get the information they want directly out of this data set using natural language, not having to know anything about coding, right? So here we go. Um, here's, I guess, the number of instances that it found using, you know, meeting that criteria. And here's the code that it, it used to do that, okay? Let's do something else too. I don't know, hopefully this works, but provide a short written um, narrative about the about the, let's say something like impact of age on the loan status. Yeah, why not? Um, it's just, yeah, something like this will, you know, I think the code would have to go in and like actually find like that impact, right? So the, yeah, what's the correlation there? So the analysis of loan status in relation to age reveals significant trends. The younger borrowers, particularly age, blah, 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 right? So, just from the art of the possible, right? Like you know, here's like how we did it. Okay. All right. So that's one of the options I've set up in my app here. 
which is that you, you know, the user can, or if you use my code, you can load a file directly from your local drive as long as it's less than 200 megabytes. Why? Because I'm using a Streamlit's uploader here. So file uploader. So as you can see, it says limit 200 megabytes per file. So what if I had a 600 megabyte file, right? So I did build that into this app. So you could, act, in this case, you would you would have to provide the file path, including, including the file name. And I have, in my code, it's, you know, the default is CSV file. GPT 3.5 Turbo is the default large language model. So had I, if I provide a file here, it's going, to, you know, it's going to give you the data preview, the first five uh, rows, and then it's going to ask you, do you want to provide column descriptors, the same routine, then you provide the prompt, etc. Okay. I'm not going to do that. The other option I set up here is if you are a Google, if you have stuff on Google Cloud Storage and that's what that's your source, you can do that as well. So I have a bunch of things there, so we'll use this one. Study performance is my so you'd have to provide the bucket name. If you are used to this, you know, you know what I what bucket name means. And if you're not a Google Cloud user, don't worry about this. But for those who might want to use Google Cloud Storage, you then need to provide the bucket name, then provide the object name, the blob, basically, uh, which is in this case is the file name. So the file name in my in this bucket is study underscore performance dot. Let me make sure I got everything spelled correctly. It will just go retrieve this CSV file and do the same thing, show you the data preview and ask you, do you want to provide, you know, column descriptors or not? Uh, Going to show you one other thing. So it's sort of cherry on the top here. The connectors. One of the connectors that Pandas AI has uh, is into Yahoo Finance, um, basically using Y Finance library. But it will connect to Yahoo Finance. The user has to provide, uh, you know, stock symbols and stuff like that. And uh, yes, misspell. <laughs> All right, you guys can fix it. MSFT. Yeah, I'll just Microsoft. And then provide the stock symbol. Yeah, I don't know. You can say something like, hey, a lot. Uh, you can ask for the yesterday's closing price. I don't know. You can ask for the latest news and whatever. Yeah, stuff like that, right? But in this case, I'm going to just going to say plot the last two years um, closing price. Okay. Yeah, directionally looks, looks correct. Okay. There you go. That's a two years closing price for Microsoft. Here is my code. So, I will, there, there'll be a link in the description below that takes you to my GitHub repo that has this code. Uh, talk to your data, name of the file is app.py, okay? Open AI, so it requires you have at least one of these API keys, Open AI or Google or Pandas AI. I recommend using Open AI or Google, just better large language models, okay? And uh, if, you, if you are gonna be using Google Cloud Storage, you, you gotta provide your Google project name and all that good stuff. You know what I'm what I mean by that. If you're a Google Cloud user, okay, and then uh, if you're new to Pandas AI, as I suspect many of you will be, install these three libraries, okay, and then this code works. If you just install those three, and, and you don't even have to worry about this guy. If you're not going to be using Google Cloud, I would just take that out, okay. I did borrow this from Pandas AI, their output parser class. And essentially what it does is it's pretty cool. I added one extra item to uh, what they provided. It takes a response and it, it then becomes more, it, it takes a response and uh, builds the intelligence that if the response is a data frame versus a, a graph or a plot or something, right? How to present that outcome output to you. Everything else pretty straightforward. So there you go, guys. Uh, this is the code that created this app. Hope you found this useful, helpful, and or interesting. And if you did, please, again, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Until next time.